Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I will show you how to go from this to this beautiful portrait style. Let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, and I wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Also, this is the first video in a series where I want to go beyond just tutorials and give real purpose to my videos, where I show you the artistic ideas and background behind these works, why things done a certain way to elevate your artistic style and expression and give you lots of ideas and trends to create beautiful artworks in an easy way. So if that sounds interesting to you, maybe subscribe to my channel, hit that bell button so you get notified and also don't forget to like this video because this tremendously helps my channel. All right, let's get started with this video. Please watch it from the start to the end because there's a ton of secret sauce in this video. So the starting point is this portrait here. You can see pretty simple portrait. What you want to do here is, first of all, this technique is specifically for dark skinned portraits. And also a good idea is to have an even background so it is easier to separate the model from the background. So the first step, we want to do here is to create an adjustment for black and white. And this will help us with these beautiful sliders here to define which of the areas of the picture should be darker or brighter. And with that, as you can see, you can create this beautiful, very dark, intense black for that portrait and try out all of these levers to see what they do and to see if they help your expression. So for example, with this one here, with the blue one, you can see when you look down here in the eyes, you can see there's a bit of a reflection from the sky. So you can decide how bright and intense do you want to have these reflections in your image. Also here we have a little bit of blue light in the hair also. So this gives a bit more structure and contrast to that hair area. Also very good. By the way, in the original picture, we have here a blue string. So you can see when I adjust this, you can also use this to either bring out that string or to hide that string in the hair. I wanna hide it a little bit to be honest in this shot. And then we have our magenta slider. Again, you get some interesting results from that. So adjust this to taste. You can see when I make this darker, the makeup is looking through a little bit more, but actually I don't want to have that in this portrait. So I will adjust this so it looks the same as the skin color. And like that, we basically have removed that little bit of makeup here because I want to focus more on the portrait in that case. By the way, I wanna make this a little bit brighter. Let me see here, like so. That is okay, perfect, good. So now what we want to do is to replace the background. And this is done in this case in a really easy way. You want to select the image layer and use your selection brush over here. Let's go to Substract here to remove all of the things we don't want to have from the background. So also a possibility, whatever seems to work, right? You can click on refine here to give Affinity Photo a second chance to go over that. You can zoom in here, for example, you can see here for the eyelashes, it needs a little bit of help also over here for that hair section. And let's maybe over here, also go over here. I will fix the hair in a second but I will apply this now as a selection like so. And then we are simply creating a mask. So down here, click on that mask layer and this will now separate the model from the background. Control D to deselect and you want to now grab that black and white adjustment layer and drag it onto the image. So you get this short line here and then this will be only on the image layer, not on the background. Now let's create that colorful background. It's also very easy to do that. Go here to the left side, create a rectangle like so, drag it out over all of the picture and then simply drag that rectangle to the background. So to the lowest layer, not inside of this group here, but below that. So you get that long blue line. 
like so. As you can see now we have a background again. And here's a very important step. There's a secret sauce. So we go here to fill. You can adjust the color. And this can already be very nice. But when you create a gradient, this background becomes a bit softer from the feeling and a bit more alive. So let's do that. Let's click here on gradient. And you see the red is already selected for us. Go over here to the other side, click on color, select the red again, but then make this side here a little bit darker. Again, this is up to taste. You can use any kind of color you want, any kind of color you feel like looks good. Again, we can also adjust this over here, maybe make this side a little bit brighter. That looks good. Right now you can see that the gradient is going from left to right, but actually it makes it more dynamic and more beautiful if it is on an angle. So to do that, click here on the gradient tool and you have here the start point, the end point, so you can move these around. And like that, you can also decide where the bright and the dark part are because you can of course reverse that by simply moving that over to the other side. So that really depends. In this case, I wanna have the bright part on the top so it follows more where the light source is coming from in this picture. All right, so now that we have selected this, you can see this already looks pretty cool. And the way why we're doing this is because this color is contrasting the beautiful dark skin that we have intensified in this photo. And by making the background so abstract, it elevates the portrait and puts the model basically on a pedestal, removing it from the reality and making it into an artwork. So to really intensely be focused focused on the beauty of that model, right? So another way to do that, to make this even more intense, is to remove these hair areas here. And you can leave that if you want. This really depends on how you feel about the portrait. This again is an artistic decision, but I think it's a good idea. So we are going to the mask again. We are selecting a brush, normal paintbrush, nothing special, just a round brush. And when you have this on black, this will make these areas invisible as you can see here. So what we want to do is opacity on 100, hardness, make that a little bit soft not completely soft, not completely hard, somewhere a little bit in the middle, and then adjust the size so it is good for you to work with that. Let's make this a little bit smaller here. And then simply what you're going to do is to paint over these areas. Don't cut too much into the hair because that might look strange. Go along the edges of the hair. And you can see this is a repetitive task, so we'll speed up the video here. All right, so now that we are finished with that, I wanna give you two more tricks on what to do here. First of all, don't remove the eyebrows that should stay in the image. And another thing is the way I move and zoom is that I hold control to zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. And then I move the canvas around by holding down the mouse wheel and moving my mouse. So with that, you can really speed up your working process. All right, so now that we are at this step, there are some additional steps to make this even more magical. One thing I want to do here is to clean up the skin a little bit. First of all, we select the image layer and then we are going to use our in-paint brush down here. And this actually is a very quick process. Set the brush to a good size and then simply paint over these areas that you want to fix with that. You can see here the paintbrush is really easily helping us doing that. You can go really fast with that and the computer will catch up to your working process a second later. So that's pretty cool that you can do that very, very fast. You don't have to pay too much attention to what the computer is doing. We have some bits and bobs up here. The reason why I'm doing that, by the way, is because this will then remove any kind of distraction that we have in the skin because we want to have this 
as intense and as elevated and beautiful as possible and to have a little bit more noise in the skin texture will just take away the attention too much from that kind of effect so let's also go down here remove some of these dots here so that again this is a little bit less noisy less attention grabbing so that's pretty important to that so now we are at a pretty good state here you can see here there's a little bit of unevenness from the lighting in that case and here is another easy trick to do that first of all i'm going to duplicate my layer with the image so right click duplicate so i have a backup this is the reason why i'm doing that then I turn off the lower of these groups here and I select the upper of these groups, right click on that and click on rasterize. So this will turn it into just a pixel layer. With that, I go here to filters, to frequency separation, and then I will look for our high frequency side, which is the gray side here on the left side. And I will push this radius so far that I can see all of these structures here of the skin in a nice way. So let's go like this. So the skin looks nice and soft, but it still has a lot of texture in detail in it. That's pretty important. Click on apply. And now look at that. I'm clicking on the low frequency layer. I'm taking my smudge finger here. And I will set this to a nice size here. Let's make this a little bit bigger actually. And flow 100%, strength 50%, that's pretty good. And now I can simply move this a little bit around. And what this does is it will blur together the brightnesses in the background. So this will make all of these areas a little bit smoother. Look at how beautiful that works and makes the skin look a lot softer and a lot more even so that's a very very easy trick to do that this is a very nice way to actually even out some of the areas in the skin and make them look softer and blend together a little bit better so there we go you can see in seconds we have improved some of the areas here by a lot very very beautiful there we go look at how magical this now looks this is the before this is the after. Have you seen how quick that was? Amazing. All right. So now we are selecting these two layers, high frequency, low frequency, right click and put them in a group. And then we are going to right click again, rasterize, and this will then simply turn that back into one layer. So here is the last bit of secret sauce. When you look at the original portrait, it has a highlight around the edges from the original lighting. But for this more abstract portrait, I feel like it is better to have these areas darker so they are not separated from the background so intensely. So here's a very easy way to do that. Click on the pixel layer we have created, hold control, click again, and you can see this will make a selection. Now I will create a pixel layer and then also create a mask layer like this. So you can see it's now applied to the pixel layer and now we can turn off the selection, control D. And with that, we will select our pixel layer again, go over here to our paintbrush. And in this case, we want to set the paintbrush color to black. You want to have it nice and big, opacity around 50%, hardness at zero. And with that, I can paint on these edges. And because I have hardness at zero and this nice big size, you can see that this will softly blend with the image. So I can paint around all of the edges like so. Let's do this real quick. And because this is on an extra layer, I can afterwards also adjust how strong I want to have this effect on my image. So let's paint around all these edges here like so. Very good. And then with opacity, I can adjust this to see how strong I want to have this effect. Let's go here with 90%. And you can see when I turn this on and off, that this will combine the portrait better with the background. Here's a last trick I want to show you, the rectangle 
is of course still a rectangle. So we can now adjust our gradient again. Click on the gradient tool. You still have your two handles here. And I would really suggest to do that at the end of your artistic process again, so you can balance the colors and the gradient better with the expressiveness of your portrait. So let's select the gradient here, go up here where we have our gradient colors, click on one of these points. And in this case, actually, I want to make one side a little bit more orange like so. And then the other side, let's pull this a little bit more into the middle. So it has a little bit less saturation and maybe even a bit more darkness like so. Let's see. That looks pretty good. Okay. And you can even move your gradient around. Let's push this a little bit lower here a little further up here. And so now we have a very beautiful combination of all of these different elements. Let me know if you like this tutorial and if you want to see more like that. Again, I will link this as a post in my Facebook group. Show me what you have created with this image, which I will also link below the video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.